Here are the equations that model the spread of an infectious disease by a discrete dynamical system. Let's specify values for the parameters. We'll set A, which is the recovery rate parameter, to be 0 0.05. And then we'll make B, the infection rate parameter, to be, well here, we're going to have to make it pretty small. You'll see why in a second. 0 0.0001. Then we should start with some initial conditions. So these were the parameters. Initial conditions, let's start with initial conditions. S naught equal 10,000. And I naught, let's start with 1,000. So we have 10,000 folks that are susceptible, 1,000 that are infected, and we don't need to start with any recovered, so let's let R not equals zero. So these are our initial conditions. The initial conditions give us the value of the state variables at time zero, and then we use these equations here, they're called difference equations, which give us the change to calculate the values of the state variables at future times. Let's see if we can do this. If t is zero, which is what we care about for the first case in order to calculate the values at time one from time zero, then we can write B S zero I zero. This is the rate in which or the number of individuals that get infected. Well, that's going to be B, which is 0 0.0001 times S naught, which is 10,000 times I naught, which is 1,000. And when you calculate that out, it turns out that is 1,000. So this means a thousand new individuals get infected from time zero to time one. A times I naught is the number of re infected individuals that re get removed, and that is, well, A is 0 0.05, and I naught is 1,000. So that gives us that only 50 individuals recover from the first time step. Now we can plug these values into the equations for the change. So S1 minus S0, when t is equal to 0, is negative b times s sub t, i sub t. So it's negative 1,000. In other words, well, what do we know? What's S0? S0 is 10,000, right? So S1 is 1,000 fewer than that, and S1 is therefore just 9,000. So we're left with only 9,000 susceptible individuals at time one. How about infectives? Well, I1 minus I0, then the change in the number of infectives. Well, it's B times S sub T sub I, I sub T, right? That's the number of new infectives, which again is 1,000 minus the number that were removed, and that is minus 50. So the change is 950. And since S I sub naught was 1,000, and we gained 950, that means at the end of time step one, we have 1,950 infected folks. Lastly, the removed, only way folks get removed is if the infected people are no longer infected, so that's the rate, the number A times I, which is 50. We started off with a zero here, so we just have that R1 equals 50. After one time step, which is a day, remember, in this model, we have S1, which is 9,000 susceptibles. We have I1, which is 1,950 infectives, and we have R1, or 50, removed. So that's what happened after one time step. So we do it for one more time step. Well, let's put in T equals 1. Calculate the number of new folks that get infected. Well, that's B times S1 times I1, 
0 0.0001 times, well, what's S1? Now it's not 10,000 anymore, it's just 9,000 susceptibles. But we have more infectives, 1,950. And if you do that calculation, you should get 1,755 new infectives. How about infectives that recover or we get removed or die, depending on what the disease is? Well, that's A, 0 0.05 times the number of infectives, 1950. And that gives us 97.5. So we have 97 and a half individuals that are no longer infected. Again, again, we're not going to worry about these uh, fractional people. We'll just round in the end, but don't round while you're doing the calculations. So we'll assume that around 98 or so people were recovered. If you plug these values into the equations here, you can calculate that the number of susceptibles in day two, since it decreases by 1,755, is down to 7,245. Similarly, the number of infectives after day two, you can calculate, well, it goes up by 1,755, but down by 97 and a half, and you're left with 3,600 and then we have a half a guy that's effective, whatever that means. And some more, 97 point and a half have recovered, so we're down to after day two. We now have 147.5 individuals that are recovered. By the way, did you see why B had to be so small? Here we had it down to 0 0.0001. Try it by hand, see what happens if you make B quite a bit bigger you'll run into problems pretty quickly. Calculating these values is a pain, especially if you want to calculate many days. So we don't recommend doing them by hand. Below on this page, you can check out an applet that will help you calculate these results pretty quickly.